I decided to try berberine. I live with diabetes. I'm in charge of managing my blood sugars 24 seven. It can be challenging. So I'll take all the help I can get. And that includes taking this berberine supplement. Berberine is a plant derived supplement that some people claim works as well as a sempic for blood sugar control. That sounds pretty impressive, right? I took one of these little pills every day for two weeks, 14 days. Actually, I took it for 17 days, just not 17 days in a row. And the thing is, I actually really wanted to take it longer as I do think that it helped my blood sugars. However, my body didn't like it. Okay, but hang tight because in this video, I'll share how I think berberine helped my blood sugars and then why I stopped taking it after only two weeks. Originally, I decided to try berberine because I was hearing online that it had a lot of potential for lowering blood sugars. Yes, I can also get sucked into social media hype, but you know what? There are actually also studies backing up some of these benefits. Like this one that showed an improvement in A1C as well as in fasting blood glucose for people living with type 2 diabetes. This one that also showed a reduction in A1C. And then this one that showed that berberine might lower blood glucose in people living with type 1 diabetes. That last study is a little bit more cautious with its conclusions and calls for more research to actually better understand the benefit for people living with type 1 diabetes. Obviously, I can't do a controlled clinical study. I'm just me. But I can experiment. And that's what I did. I've been living with type 1 diabetes since 1997 and I've got a pretty good handle on it, but I wouldn't complain if it was a little easier. So let me show you what berberine did for me. I took 600 milligrams of berberine every night with food and what I found was that my blood sugars quickly started to drop overnight. I actually started having a lot of low blood sugars, so many that I had to lower my nighttime long-acting insulin. And after about a week, I also had to lower my daytime long-acting insulin. So does this mean that berberine was working for me? Was it lower my blood sugars? Well, it seems so. However, there could also be other reasons for this. Maybe I was subconsciously more diligent with my insulin or maybe I was less stressed. After all, there's over 40 things that can impact blood sugars aside from food and insulin. So I can't rule out any of that. Let's talk about why berberine might have been helping me lower my blood sugars before we jump into why I then stopped taking it after only two weeks if it was actually helping me. Studies show it helps the body respond better to insulin and it prevents the liver from creating more glucose. So translate it. It improves your insulin sensitivity. So that's how effective your body is at utilizing the insulin that either your body produces or that you inject. And it might reduce the glucose or the sugar output from your liver. Yes, your liver can do that. It's your body's way of helping out, giving you an energy boost. It can be a little frustrating though especially when you're in charge of managing your blood sugars. It's interesting that berberine has been called nature's ozempic, as to me, this sounds much more similar to how metformin works. Actually, it's exactly how metformin works, whereas ozempic helps the pancreas make more insulin. That is a little simplified, of course. Ozempic also helps reduce the liver glucose release and can lower appetite and slow down digestion. And I know it's even prescribed to some people living with type 1 diabetes who are seeing benefits. And obviously, I don't know everything, but it still sounds more like metformin to me. My endocrinologist and I have actually discussed me starting metformin in the past as a way of helping me combat morning blood sugar rises due to the liver dumping glucose into my bloodstream. I decided not to start metformin back then because I was a little bit too nervous about the potential side effects and I found other ways of working through those morning highs. And yes, I know metformin is only FDA approved for type 2 diabetes. However, your doctor can still prescribe medication for you off-label if they think that it can have a clinical benefit for you. So there's that. And since it works the way that it does, it makes sense why it could be beneficial for people living with any type of diabetes, including pre-diabetes, and for people like me, who live with type 1 diabetes. It supposedly also has some weight loss capabilities, but that was not my main motivator for trying berberin. Studies have also shown that those that weight loss isn't really seen until three months after starting berberine, and it's mainly for people with a BMI over 30. And I can confirm that taking it for two weeks did not change my weight. So if it's that fantastic, if it helped with my blood sugars, why did I stop taking it? I stopped taking berberine because it can have some side effects, and for me they were quite significant. I thankfully did not have diarrhea, <laughs> but my stomach did not like the supplement and it didn't take more than 24 hours before my belly looked like a beach ball. So the constipation, gas, and upset stomach, yep, that was me. Remember how I said I actually took berberine for 17 days, just not 17 days in a row? 
Well, that's because I started out taking 1200 milligrams of berberin like it's recommended on the bottle. My body immediately rejected this and I could only endure three days of stomach ache and bloat. This obviously won't happen to everyone and I do think I have a fairly sensitive digestive system. Second time around, I cut my dose down to 600 milligrams. So for this product, the one that I used, that's one tablet. Generally, it's recommended that you take 1,000 to 1,500 milligrams per day to see a benefit. But given my system couldn't handle 1,200 milligrams and I can't really cut these in two, I just decided to go with 600. My system just didn't like this supplement. The reaction to the 600 milligrams were way better than the reactions to the 1,200 milligrams, but ultimately this was just not worth it for me. It was painful, it was uncomfortable, and not being able to fit into clothing because I was so bloated, it was just unpleasant. So I stopped. And I will say it took well over a week for my system to relax. But since the recommendation I've seen is 1,000 to 1,500 milligrams, I would have loved to try a full dose for weeks just to see how much of an impact that could have had on my blood sugars. If you decide to try this supplement, I highly recommend that you work with your medical team, not only to get the right dose of berberin, but also to assess whether or not you need to adjust some of your other diabetes medications. This seems like really powerful stuff. There's no need for you to do this by yourself. Although this supplement did not work for me, that doesn't mean that I'm doomed to see my blood sugars rise up every morning. I've actually identified some really solid ways of reducing the risk of high blood sugars in the morning, and you can check out all my tricks in this video. I hope you liked this video and that you found my little experiment interesting. Have you tried berberin? Did you like it? Did you not like it? Please leave a comment down below. Also, it'd be great if you could hit that like button and subscribe to my channel. By subscribing and turning on notifications, you make sure you never miss a thing. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.